At the first reading, the staff had given you some background on uh, how we got to this point. But basically, this uh, ordinance is uh, an amendment to the text portion of the mixed use town center land use description portion of our comprehensive land use plan update that was adopted in 2012. Um, specifically, this language um, provides for some distinctly stated provisions. There's some language in there currently that is a little more detailed than it probably needs to be, like talking about hours of operations and targeting certain um, um, types of businesses like art galleries and things like that. Um, the the uh, revised language also emphasizes the uh, interconnectedness, the importance of interconnectedness, iconic architecture, uh, focusing on form, arrangement of buildings, the context, the surrounding plan of development, um, and most specifically um, deals with residential types and densities to try to provide for um, more clear language uh, that, that um, you know, those, those type of developments are to be appropriate to the context. Uh, for example, high density residential, what the language is proposed here would only be appropriate where it's part of a mixed use town center. Uh, is there adjacent to it or within it to um, help it, you know, sustain itself? Uh, and also in those areas that do not abut existing residential communities. Um, and what this does is really it, it helps bring the language in this portion of the land use plan in line with some other provisions that are talked about in the plan, like transitions and flex density, uh, trying to blend it all together. Uh, because it, the plan in its current language does talk about protecting existing neighborhoods from incompatible new development, but this language, you know, substantiates that and um, really makes it much more clear than what we currently have. Uh, this language clearly provides for greater protection uh, to existing residential communities that um, directly abut the mixed-use town center land use area. Um, when this was reviewed on first reading, um, there was a recommendation that was made under the uses section uh, to insert the words mixed use before the words town center in bullet items five and six. Uh, that amendment has been made uh, to the ordinance that was in your packets. Um, there have been no other changes uh, to this ordinance. It was unanimously recommended for approval uh, by the Planning Commission in September and also on first reading um, by the Board of Mayor and Alderman um, two weeks ago. And the staff recommends approval of Ordinance 20-20 uh, on second reading. Alderman Meyer, I'll move to approve. I'll second. Okay, with the first and the second, I'm gonna I'll make a statement to begin with, uh, and then we'll move on to uh, possible citizens' forums uh, on this particular subject matter. Uh, I first want to say thank you to all the questions that were emailed to me from the Farragut citizens. Um, I'm still working on the list to, uh, to reply. And uh, but, uh, what I have to say is really the correct information is the foundation for the best opinion here. Uh, I'd also like for everyone to understand that the proposed second reading tonight is to protect existing residential areas. This concerns all areas where their homes could be potentially be right up against high density residential. Uh, this could be existing vacant property or property that could be torn down and, and repurposed in the future. And at, uh, at this point, I'll go ahead and uh, ask the uh, town recorder to read in the citizens comments, please. Yes, sir. Our first one is from Phyllis Lent. She's at 12423 Palm Blaine. <clears throat> says, why in the heck is a multi-residential area so close to a school? Traffic is already awful and students are in danger of cars and perhaps ones living in the housing. This plan needs to be redone. Developers probably don't live in the area, not in my backyard. The next one is the left the Lee at 216 Town Road. I received an email from Louise Pavlin with the question, do you want this substantial residential use throughout the MUTCD 
be primarily multifamily residents? My answer is no. I do not want multifamily residents as a part of our town center district. The next one's Carlton Edmonds at 308 Park Place Boulevard. So that says I live at 308 Park Place Boulevard and the subdivision directly behind Town Hall. I've served on the HOA Board of Directors in the past, but I'm currently not on the board. We are directly impacted by any changes to the used classification of the MUTC. As a, re as a resident, I'm not opposed to changing the use classification away from substantial residential use, but I would like to see it against high density housing, which has been previously proposed for this area. Our concern is access and egress from Park Place, which is already difficult at times. High density proposed for the former Kroger Center to the east and for the mayor's property adjacent to Park Place would put us in a competitive a competition for access to Campbell Station Road and Kingston Pike. Interest, interestingly, access to the town hall during this year's early voting has been severely impacted since demand has been heavier than I have ever seen. Overflow parking on the street has extended up into our subdivision, making it very difficult to access um, by emergency responders. <clears throat> Some of the problem is, be, is because voters don't realize how little room is left for travel and not being considered enough to yield to those with the right of way through trying to exit the subdivision. High density housing, more attractions, and not enough parking space would only make this a permanent problem for us as residents. Next one is Ben and Susie Parham at 11008 Callaway, Drive, Callaway View Drive. Board of Mayor and Alderman, I respectfully request that you remove the substantial re residential use current text wording from the current language in the mixed use town center land use. I want a town center, I believe the majority of the town residents likely do too. However, I do not want the town center if it includes 208 unit apartment complex that will be four stories high. I was under the impression the town of Farragut had strict regulations with regarding how high a building could be and the signage and occupancy. This is why we chose Farragut, not any other area of the city with equal or better schools and property values. I'm an educator and feel as though this would put, a, put our favorite schools at a great disadvantage as they are already overcrowded and underfunded compared to the rest of the county. In addition, the additional traffic this would cause in the middle of the most congested intersections in our area would be a major negative impact. I realize the old Kroger is an eyesore in our community, but there are better uses than a 280-unit apartment complex. I encourage you to approve the town center concept and remove the substantial residential use wording. I respectfully ask that you please represent the majority of the voters interest rather than a builder or construction company who probably do not live or work in our beautiful Farragut community. The following is the existing language of the mixed use town center land use description that applies to all the properties in the MUTC overlay, the purple portion. The substantial residential use primarily multifamily resident, but some attached units, townhouses and duplexes, for transitions to adjacent single family neighborhoods. Page 26 of the CLUP, second bullet point under the category entitled uses. Again, I would respectfully request the Board of Mayor and Alderman consider the current, consider the current text amendment to remove from the existing language concerning substantial residential use, primary multifamily, while maintaining the intent and goals that to provide for the walkable pedestrian oriented town center. <clears throat> the next one is James and Carol Taylor at 11108 Windward Drive. We concur to remove from the existing language substantial residential use of multifamily residents while maintaining a walkable pedestrian oriented town center. Thank you for consideration of our prior objections. Next one is Tiffany Gundry and Matt Van Essen, both Park Place residents at 244 Ivy Gate Lane. It says, to the members of the board, as residents of Park Place neighborhood, we support the proposed amendment, the current comprehensive land use plan to reflect the following verbiage. High density residential can only be in a mixed use center currently going in behind the old Kroger building and has to transition to what it abuts. High density residential apartments with not only negatively affect impact property values of the immediate surrounding areas, but it would also tax the roads and schools of the impacted area. Kingston Park is already heavily trafficked and congested. 
Fairgate schools handle a huge number of students and traffic from Fairgate residents. The proposed amendment regarding transitions from new high density residents to the type of neighborhood and residents that abuts will only will allow new structures to become part of the town of Fairgate without overwhelming current neighborhoods and resources. Thank you. The next one is Michael Wilson at 412 Eisenhower. His states, good evening. My issue with these amendments is a lack of significant public outreach to check the current attitude of the citizens as required on page six of the comprehensive land use plan. I understand the position the town is taking and believe if the outreach is conducted, many if not most citizens would support something similar to what is being proposed. Many simply want to have their voices heard and, the, and provide input on these changes. Admittedly, there are conflicting opinions regarding these amendments and if they constitute a major update. Town leadership, including many of you, have provided varying responses to this question. Mr. Mayor, in a personal email to me his, and his Fairgate Press article today states that the required public outreach has been done with little or no interest. Alderman Pinchock during the first reading stated this was a minor change that did not require said outreach. Alderman Meyer stated essentially the same in his Fairgate Press article today. He said, here's my own address, restricting apartments from 100% of the town center land to 25% of the town center land is not a major change to the CLUP because the apartment restriction does not change land use, schools, or intent of the CLUP. Limiting the MUTC area of high density residential by 75% is contrary to strategy one. Bring about a downtown by limiting the substantial residential called, called for in paragraph E as well as strategy three, encourage greater housing choices, encourage greater housing choices negatively impacted. Included in this strategy are support for new and expanded retail services and greater housing diversity needs for needs of young professionals and the elderly. The mixed use town center description intent and uses section further support the two strategies above. The intent section item two states integrity integrated high density residential development to help support retail and other commercial uses. Under the usage section, item, item two states, substantial residential uses, primary multifamily residents, but some attached units, townhomes and duplexes for transitions to adjacent single family neighborhoods, emphasis added. It is apparent that the majority of residential properties should be multifamily with lower density residential next to existing neighborhoods. The proposed changes limit MUTC high density, multifamily residents by 75%. This is a large change with a substantial negative impact on the MUTC development in the CLUP strategies one and three. In the Brooklyn development site, key characteristics of the MUTC, such as high degree of ground floor transparency or glass for visual interest to pedestrians and connected building facades, facades with minor setback variations will be changed too. These are, these are key to garnering a downtown feel in the town center. As an example, simple, simply compare the artist renderings for the Brooklawn development site, CLUP page 53, to the developer provided renderings in agenda item number five from the FNPC meeting on July 16th, 2020. There are significant differences between what the plan shows and what is proposed to be developed with the substantial changes to the MUTC. The main argument during the first reading and reiterated in the mayor, mayor's Farragut Press article today is that it is being done to protect existing neighborhoods. As previously noted, this protection is currently provided through the proper transition of density. Commercial and high density residential to transition to lower density residential. Additionally, the governing zoning districts for all multifamily residential development and the MUTC further protects residential properties by restricting building height within 100 feet of, of the peripheral property lines. Thus, a developer cannot place a three or four story apartment building within 100 feet of current residential property lines. As good as the reasoning of protecting existing neighborhoods sounds, it is a straw, straw arm, straw man argument that the FMPC and Burma have a responsibility to protect these properties under the current 
requirement. Lastly, the vice mayor has stated that the town must treat all landowners fairly and equitably, regardless if they own one acre or 200. These amendments do just the opposite. The issue has come up due to the proposed development of the Biddle Farm. As noted in the August 29th FNPC meeting, item nine, the town asked to, the applicant to identify any provisions that they may wish to have revisited and amended. This request was made during the previous staff developer meeting. This input is specific to the planned commercial district. And that's our time at the five minutes for um, this one. I'll finish the sentence. This input is specific to the planned commercial development zone district, which would need to be modified to allow them to build apartments on the ground floor. Our next one is Christine DeMauro at 349 uh, Bernie Circle. As a homeowner in Fairgood, I'm strongly opposed to any changes to the CLUP, which will allow overbuilding in our town by developers who want to build high density rental apartments. Next one is Ron Roeck at 725 Foxdale Lane. The Biddle Farms proposed project is quite disheartening yet expected. Let the, let the heat from last year blow over and then strike. Sadly, the big picture is now being ignored. One, as we calculate last year, there are multiple efforts to build apartments in Farragut, including Biddle, over 800 in total. If Biddle gets approved, then the others have strong precedent to argue for their project to be approved. Two, apartments locally owned sound good, but can we be assured that they will not stay that way? I read it by buying the complex and then continually buy and sell in a portfolio of other properties like we traded baseball cards as kids. This property will mean nothing to them, and often it will be bought and sold to offset taxes, gains, losses, and such. Thus, we know the upkeep, will, the upkeep will not matter to them at all. The citizens of the town will hence suffer. Three, pre-COVID and post-COVID. And the public schools could not hand, and cannot handle the increased volume. Kids from Farragut have to ride on the floor of the school buses is outrageous and dangerous. The library, library being your, being removed to pack in more classrooms is ridiculous. So what if FH, FHS is not currently at capacity when FPS and FIS are over capacity? Four, Chodo's out of control growth and lack of infrastructure adds to Farragut's growing problems with traffic and overcrowding schools. Hardin Valley's mismanagement of growth traffic infrastructure hurts Farragut also. Sadly, Farragut has to factor this in and do what is right for its residents. Five, as always, a town center sounds nice, but this isn't a town center. I saw proposed Aldi on the town center map with Kroger, Fresh Market, Ingalls, and Publix all in the extreme close proximity. We do not need an Aldi's there. Also, this is certainly not the time to be adding brick and mortar retail. Almost all other retail centers are struggling to get tenants. The newly revamped Ingalls Center has zero, has attracted zero, and what a great location it is with parking, traffic lights, et cetera. This will not be a town center, but it will be another mismanaged shopping center in the area of e-commerce and big box domination. Six, no way Campbell Station and Kingston Pike can handle more traffic. Recently constructed buildings up against roadways kill the opportunities to widen these roads now. Very poor planning. During different times of the day, Campbell Station going towards I-40 and up into Hardin Valley is also a nightmare. Simply, or number seven, this simply isn't the vision of Fearget that we were sold. That comes in fair and kind of regard. Our next one is Mike Mitchell, 716 Brooksworth Boulevard. The Fairgate Comprehensive Land Use Plan states major updates should include substantial public outreach to help check that the plan reflects current attitudes. Ma major updates are also defined as one that substantially changes the land use goals and intent of the plan, CLUP page six. It is clear that these proposed changes on September 17th in the Fairgate Planning Commission about the text amendments to the CLUP were major and should have been discussed with the community just as the town did with the future land use plan updates for the Watt Road Corridor and Outlet Drive in recent years. The Farragut Planning Commission ignored Farragut Wall. And the Planning Commission, if the Planning Commission makes a mistake, it is up to the Board of Mayor and Alderman to send back the issue to the Planning Commission. Not only has the BOMA failed to do that, it has voted once to approve this mistake and will vote a final time this evening. This is wrong. Not only is it wrong, this body has been notified repeatedly, it is wrong. In addition to that, there is an issue of conflicting agendas. 
This is the agenda for staff developed for Tuesday, September 1st, 2020 FMPC item. The agenda listed item number eight, discussion on surrogate land use plan and zoning related text amendments associated with the redevelopment of the old Kroger property, Town Center at Middle Farms, parcel 3.0203 and a portion of 3.18, portion of 3.19, tax map 14345 acres. This is the agenda for the public Fairgate Municipal Planning Commission, September 17th. Item eight, discussion and public hearing on amendments to the text of the comprehensive land use plan updates as it relates to the mixed use town center and use description, town of Fairgate applicant. The town of Fairgate misrepresented the agenda to the Fairgate residents, but was honest to the staff and developers. It was the same item. It was for the Biddle Farm. It was, this was unethical. It was a false and misleading defective public notice to the public. Mayor Williams wrote the Farragut Press this week that the people of Farragut did not respond to the opportunity to speak about the changes to the CLUP. When and where was such an invitation made to the public, made public to the people? The mayor also said that the Farragut Press, that the CLUP steering committee met the requirement for public outreach on the CLUP. How is this possible when no one knew about the steering committee? It is disappointed to see such tactics used to prevent people from, re from redress of their town government, which is, clear, which is a clear violation of the First Amendment of the United States Constitution. Isn't this a fool's errand? Half of the Biddle farm is under a 100-year floodplain. You can see that clearly on the enclosed FEMA map. The Boma and Planning Commission have lost faith and trust of the people for a piece of property that is not developable. Do the people have their... Uh, have to take their own cases over your heads and go to TDEC or the Corps of Engineers. All right, our next one is Mark O'Connell or O'Donnell at 11044 Crosswinds Drive. It says, Dear Boma, before asking questions, I'll reiterate that the current road network can't efficiently handle increased traffic resulting from any amount of new high density residential construction associated with the proposed town center. Question number one. Why are you favoring the will of the developer of the will of the people? I don't understand, and I'm and I to assume this action is allowable through the concierge provision in the CLUP. Three, how will the construction of high density residential reduce traffic congestion in and around the area of Kingston Pike and Campbell Station? Four, will the developer construct a loop road or overpass of sorts to allow through traffic to circumvent the town center and feather back into existing main arteries? Five, has the developer provided a traffic study that corroborates that his design concept will actually reduce traffic congestion? Six, will the developer be on the hook to pay for necessary infrastructure upgrades resulting from the text amendments and zoning changes? He's requesting an order to build his development. Seven, is there enough space to gradually transition from high density MUTC to the, the established very low density neighborhoods located along Concord Road? Eight, I understand the concept of transition as outlined in the CLUP, but what are your thoughts on what a gradual transition would be for specific high-density de high MUTC to a very low-density established neighborhood along Concord Road? Nine, where is the attraction for the regional draw? Ten, will the Town Center Plaza house an amphitheater or, or be expanded to house an amphitheater that will attract KSO and the likes of artists to play at the Bijou to perform at Farragut. A couple of comments on the introduction of the CLUP. I did not realize the outlook of the town was so bleak. Two, I didn't realize the Parkside Mall was nearing the end of its lifespan and likely to verge of becoming SA. A couple of observ um, observations on the project as it relates to the CLUP. Three, is the project design concept as a whole expandable and lend itself to being future-proof? Four, does the four-story high-density residential building with a chain-link fence, tennis concrete courts meet the timeless aesthetic appeal, timeless aspect of architecture? Will it be built with granite foundations similar to downtown Knoxville? Five, will, will, the, will there be technology, technological advancements and employees forms alternative energy, wind, solar, or ge and geothermal that will reduce energy costs for residents? Six, when Fairgate High School students gaze upon the four-story high-density residential complex from the bay windows of the high school and the lunch court, all they aspire to begin their careers in downtown Fairgate. Seven, this downtown 
will be so grand in nature, it will connect Fairgate to outlying towns in downtown Knoxville. Eight, will the town center as rendered truly be a catalyst for pumping vitality throughout the community? Nine, will the high density residential complex be expandable to allow for a variety of rooftop activities as popularity grows? 10, do you really feel this development captures the essence of the CLUP? Next one is Dennis Falkowitz at 412 Torrington Court. The vice mayor has stated that all property landowners must be treated fairly and equally regardless if they own one acre or 100 acres. Isn't this amendment doing just the opposite? As noted in the August 29th FMPC meeting, item nine, the town hall asked the applicant to identify any possible provisions they may wish to have revisited and amended. This request was made at a previous staff developer meeting. This is a specific, this is specific to the Planned Commercial Development District. It needs to be modified for them to be allowed to put apartments on the first floor as opposed to above the commercial parts of the building. But when this, when but when changing this, wouldn't it then apply to all properties in the MUTC? Don Kendall in an email August 10th, 2020 states that the desired changes include removing residential, residential provided loca located in upper stories, requirements and changing the height, building height to 60 feet to allow for four story apartment buildings. So if the town changes or amends the zoning for this specific developer, but at the same time limits other MUTC property landowners' abilities to go forward with similar projects, as currently described in the MUTC land use and as in MUTC section of the C1 zoning, how will this be fair to others? How can we amend it for one particular developer but not allow others to do the same opportunities? And won't this bring possibility of lawsuits? Well, I know that these issues have been in the paper and posted online with COVID and meetings happening virtually. I believe it has been hard for Fairgate citizens to be totally aware of what is happening. That being said, I would like to see this issue tabled until more thorough public outreach has been completed. Thank you for all you do for Fairgate. Mark and Cindy Lindoni at 11017 Callaway View Drive. Hello, first we'd like to thank you for giving us the opportunity to share our desire with you. We have lived in Concord Hills for 13 years and love Farragut. We wouldn't like to, we would like to see the wording changed and then the directive, the directive changed to not substantial multi-use housing for future development. The next one is Doug Horn at 12103 South Foxton. Does we object to the ordinance 2020 that amends the text of the land use plan as it relates to the mixed use town center land use? This proposed change is arbitrary and it discriminates against Eddie and Linda Ford's 68 acre property. The Ford property was always listed as the perfect mixed use town center opportunity property just west of the town hall. We are coming to the town with a fine mixed use town center proposal with frontage outlot, medical office, and retail pod building, multifamily and attached um, condos. The current land use plan calls for multifamily up to 15 units per acre and that's what our plan calls for. The Ford family has owned this property most of the 20th century and all of the 21st century, and for the town to change the rules arbitrarily, arbitrary for mixed-use town center land use is completely un unfair and ridiculous and appears to be targeted, targeted to deny the Ford property the land use that has been planned for years by the town itself. The town officials always wanted this property to be a mixed-use town center with multifamily condos, medical, office, and retail structures. Of course, no matter the land use, we can propose zoning changes of the, third, of the 68 acre Ford property, but it's much easier with the current land use plan that has been in effect for years. To limit the mixed use town center development plan for high density residential to property located only in the area bounded by South Campbell Station Road, Concord Road and Kingston Pike is, is picking winners and losers and legally questionable and will subject the town to legal action. I am forwarding this mixed use town center plan. We call Agora, which means a gathering place named after historic Greek civilization. This is what we are submitting, submitting for Eddie and Linda Ford property. Please show this to the people in the BEMA meeting on October 22nd. Every development, including Concord Hills, Thornton Heights and Glen Abbey have folks that object to the adjacent development. We remember a few years ago when, when we built the Glen Abbey development. There were adjacent residents that objected to it. All growth and development have people that say NIMBY. 
please keep this in mind. Again, this is a quality mixed-use town center development we are proposing Agora. We do not believe it, it is wise or fair and equitable to make the text changed in Ordinance 2020. Our next one is Christina Meyer at 412 North Cedar Bluff Road. Um, this is Mr. Horn's attorney. Says, as a follow up to my client's comments, I would like to add some additional concerns that the town of Fergate needs to consider. As attorney for Doug Horn, a Fergate resident and real estate developer, I have been involved several times over the last couple of years in aiding his rezoning request to install multifamily residential development on his own property, where these were formal requests to the Fergate Planning Commission or informal inquiries made to the town's planning department. I've personally been in attendance at at least twice to hear him and his representatives be told that the town center district reflected in the land use plan is the only place the town would allow the density Mr. Horn needs in order to make such a development financially feasible, despite the fact that neither Mr. or Mrs. Horn nor any of Mr. Horn's companies own any property in the town center area. I've, I've been advised that the same refrain was re relayed to him and his employees on several other occasions as well. As a result, Mr. Horn lost two separate contracts with apartment developers to purchase the property he owns with his wife. Finally, Mr. Horn took the town up on its promise and he under undertook the negotiation of a property belonging to Mr. and Mrs. Eddie Ford, which is in the heart of the Fergate Dis Town Center District. He relayed this information to the mayor and others so the town has been well aware of Mr. Horn's intention to bring mixed use development plan for the town center zoning district and the commission for zoning approval, which plan would necessarily include multi-family housing. It also has every reason to expect the housing density within such a proposal will be great or equal to or greater than his previous petitions for zoning approval. I believe it strains credibility to assert that the Planning Commission's sudden desire to reduce density levels within the Town Center District, just as Mr. Horn is preparing to seek approval for high density housing within the Town Center, is merely a coincidence. Rather, the announcement of the proposed changes to the land use plan smacks of an attempt by the Commission to sidestep a potential zoning challenge by Mr. Horn based on the Commission's manifest abuse of its zoning power when it turns down his proposal for rezoning consistent with the current land use plan. After all, if the plan is changed prior to his submission for housing density approval, then perhaps the commission's hands are clean. Mr. Horn's plans for a multifamily project on Mr. and Mrs. Ford's property will most likely be residential resistance by some adjacent property owners or fears of increased traffic, diminished of property values of their home. However, as planning department staff and most or all of the commission members are surely aware aware today, just as they were surely aware when the land use plan within the town center mixed use concept was adopted, generalized and common common fears of injury by neighbors wary of new development that do not confer standing on those neighbors to challenge rezoning that is based upon the land use plan. Accordingly, it is much more political ex extent to just change the plan before Mr. Horn's submission, despite the year-long mantra of the commission and the planning department that the town needs multifamily housing to attract younger residents. The only place to have such housing is in the town center district, zoning district. Now that someone has finally found an economical viable way to affect the town's desire, the planning commission has changed its mind. We hope the commission, by, by extension, the town will reflect on all the potential implications of reducing the housing density within the town center district that is reflected in the land use plan. If it does, we believe the only conclusion that can be drawn is that the town center density requirements should not change just as the long desired concept of a mixed use development that attracts a younger demographic could actually be realized. Thank you for your time and attention. The next one is Glenn, Glenn or Gerald Hammer at 11137 Windward Drive. The Dear Mayor Williams and Board of Aldermen, let me start by saying, as discussed in my previous letter, to the Board of Mayor and Aldermen dated October 7, 2020, I have read the CLUP and all of it, including the proposed revision and informed on the pur purpose of Ordinance 2020. I'm generally in agreement with the development of the MUTC and would like us, Fergit, to do something with the old Kroger eye store on the middle property. There is potential for positive benefits if implemented correctly for the town and the people of Farragut. 
As such, I will address only the proposed language in Ordinance 2020. That's recommending we replace Bullet 5 under the Uses section, page 31 of 55, with the following wording. High density residential shall only be approved as part of the mixed use town center development plan located in the area bound by Camp South Campbell Station Road, Concord Road, and Kingston Pike. Delete bullet six. Thank you for your time and attention. I'm glad to discuss any of the above. Feel free to call or email me. And that concludes our citizen comment. Okay, thank you, Porter. We appreciate the uh, comments that's been sent in as always. And uh, at this point, uh, we will um, we'll go into discussion from the board members. And uh, I think uh, we'll start with probably uh, Alderman Pinchock. All right, this is Alderman Pinchock. Um, I'll be brief. I just have a few things to say. Um, I have uh, been on the board for six years, uh, since 2014. Uh, that's two years after the um, comprehensive land use plan was uh, created and uh, approved. Um, we have known for eight years now that a town center was going to need high density housing to make this project work. And uh, I think that this, and I hope that this ordinance will, will help us uh, with the way this high density is developed. And uh, that's, uh, that's about all I've got to say. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, We'll move on to Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So um, um, we'd like to make a couple comments. Um, the first comment is that my decision on this vote is not based on any plan um, by a developer. I have not seen Mr. Horn's plan, although it was submitted to us. I have a day job and I haven't looked at it. Um, I'm vaguely familiar with the other plan that most of the residents are, are talking about in their comments, but I don't have a very learned knowledge of it. The basis of my vote is the comprehensive land use plan itself and the strategies that are included in it. And I believe that this amendment meets strategy one, which is, as Alderman um, Pinchock has alluded to, has been um, uh, a vision for leaders in Farragut for at least eight years. And strategy one basically line, outlines the vision of a downtown with people living in it. People shopping in it, offices, um, dining, and having substantial residence um, densities within that um, section of the town. And I believe that this amendment still meets that strategy. I think this amendment also guarantees the strategy number three in the CLUP, which increases housing choices. I don't know anybody on this board, I don't know any Farragut resident who wants six or seven apartment complexes in our town center. I know no one who wants that. And that's what we're going to get if we do not vote and to approve this amendment. This amendment will allow for different densities of residential throughout the entire town center so we will still have a section, about 25% of the land will be designated for apartments, which is what the slang has been for um, our high density um, designations. But there are still other types of densities of residential uses throughout the entire town center. And for me, it makes good sense because the amendment makes good sense because it meets strategy three. We're guaranteeing that there will be multiple choices. It won't be 100% apartments across the board. It'll be apartments in 25% and then other density of housing throughout the rest of the, of the area. And so I, I fully support it. Um, I'm a proud um, standard barrier for the vision. I believe that we need a downtown with people living in it. I would be very concerned to have a downtown without people living in it because that downtown would be competing with Turkey Creek and we need to have a downtown that helps um, support the businesses that will be inside of it. And I think that this amendment will still allow for that. Um, I've heard, and you all have heard, multiple comments about traffic concerns. And I share those concerns. And I probably don't want to speak for everybody else on BOMA, but I'm thinking we all are concerned about traffic um, based on any development that happens in this town. My understanding is that we will have a study done before any formal plan is, uh, and final plan is presented to BOMA to review. And so 
Um, I want to make sure that the residents and everyone hears me when I'm saying that my decision is not based on any kind of plan that has some kind of negative impact to tra on traffic because there has been no plan sent to BOMA for approval. And we won't approve any kind of development, uh, we won't vote on any type of development without the data involved in a traffic study and most likely some kind of environmental study, which is really the job of the developer to do. So therefore, very long-winded, I apologize for the length of time. Um, I truly support um, this amendment. I believe it meets the heart and the vision of the downtown that we will have in the town of Farragut that will make us unique and will give us an iconic identity. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Alderman Meyer. Uh, next will be uh, Vice Mayor Pavlin. I'm just going to make a really brief statement that I believe that this amendment protects existing residential while uh, providing for a pedestrian-oriented town center. And with that, I'll make a motion to approve. Second. I thought we already did that. Okay. Um, yeah. excuse, excuse me. I'm sorry, I thought okay. that we already made the motion to approve in a second, but I was responding to the Vice Mayor's comment, but maybe we didn't. Uh, we did. Uh, I yeah. think uh, at this point, uh, my plan was to read in what I had put in the newspaper, but I think everybody's probably seen that and read it. Uh, so uh, what I will say is planning in, in our community is, is really vitally important. I mean, it, it really is. And with high development standards, it is it is an ongoing process. Our uh, Your town leaders want the same thing that residents want. They want a thriving, vibrant community that provides amenities that are attractive to residents and to visitors. And uh, uh, so when we, when we vote on things like this, we, we do all do our research independently. Um, that's something that uh, uh, I guess a lot of you, if you've asked me questions or the vice mayor questions or, or any of the aldermen, you, you've had some answers uh, based on the research that we do. And uh, yes, there will be a traffic study. It's it's ongoing now. Yes, there will be a, a floodplain and, and a land study that will tell us uh, what they feel, what they actually research and, and bring that back to the developer and, and he will pass that on to us. Uh, this this is a uh, something that we uh, that we try to do in a very organized manner. Uh, we've had uh, uh, quite a few meetings on this, uh, as far as through staff developer meetings and uh, and uh, planning commission meetings, and uh, that was something that uh, we do with all all items. And you know, it's this case we went over and above because I've never had a an item that was uh, presented on the agenda uh, that uh, that had uh, seven meetings prior to even going to the Comprehensive Land Use Plan Steering Committee, which there was two meetings there. Um, and uh, that was, all, all of our, our meetings are public noticed, and, uh, which is what we do. And uh, so residents that for some reason, uh, for the first, seven means they did not be involved uh, and even after the two steering committee meetings we did we had very little uh, uh input uh from other than the, the people that were on the steering committee and uh which was uh, unusual compared to what we had with uh the mcphee road and the watt road uh, but it was very similar to what we the uh, lack of of uh, input from the citizens on the outlet uh, entertainment center or entertainment quarter um we had virtually no no input from, from that as well but uh anyway that's uh we've uh we went through this uh, pretty much as we would any other uh subject matter and the town center has been was actually the fourth of the uh steering committee's projects to look at uh they were based all of them based on the fact that there had to be a reason for us to look at it and with the uh with the outlet um uh area uh Snyder road area that was because of top golf i mean they come to us and and we had to look at it to see what needed to be done for that to fit 
the same with the uh, Watt Road. We had uh, property owners out there that wanted to change the uh, zoning on their property uh, to uh, a commercial so they could sell it. And the residents out there were very uh, involved with, uh, they did not want uh, the uh, commercial right up against their subdivisions, and you can't blame them. Uh, they, they asked for a uh, basically some sort of a transition in between the, uh, the commercial property and, and their subdivision. Of course, there would be a buffer as well. And any, anything that we look at has to have a transition and a buffer. And it, and it don't matter what piece of property it is, that's what we require. And, uh, and of course, when we, we done the Watt Road, that was, again, driven by somebody – that was uh, potentially looking at putting a, um, a, a little strip center out there, and that was brought to the residents, and uh, we uh, we learned what uh, what they wanted. So uh, 